In this video, we're going to see what $100 can get you at the only dim sum restaurant in Phoenix, Arizona. What is dim sum? Well, it's more than just a meal. It's a tradition that dates back to centuries in China. Originating from Cantonese culture, dim sum translates to touch the heart. And it is a style of Chinese cuisine that's all about small, flavorful dishes served with tea. Dim sum is typically enjoyed during brunch hours and consists of an array of bite-sized portions like dumplings, buns, rolls, and other savory or sweet treats. These dishes are often steamed, fried, or baked, and they're usually served in bamboo baskets or small plates. The whole experience is about sharing, enjoying a variety of flavors, and savoring the moment with friends or family. We are in front of Great Wall, the oldest and the only dim sum restaurant in Phoenix, Arizona. Great Wall itself is a blast from the past. Actually, it's basically the past. And today, we're gonna dwell in it for $100. It's cheaper than a therapy session and more delicious. All right, we're in the waiting area. It's really <laughs> packed right now. It's Saturday morning. You should come during Saturday or Sunday in the morning because that's, that's when everything's happening. That's when everything's the most fresh. So we're gonna try to find a seat. All right, let's go. Kind of funny there used to be pricing on here but now it's just all empty so it's gonna be super hard to determine how much we spend but i'm assuming we won't hit a hundred dollars time to start ordering get some egg tarts here i love those things that's one of the things you definitely should get to these egg tarts called don tots i've seen ones that are way bigger these are somewhat small there's ones that are about this big there's different versions of them from different parts of the world but these are more Chinese egg tarts here. It's uh, It has the clean yellow look to it. Some of them has like the burnt kind of texture to them, but these here are pretty clean. Yellow, crisp, very cute. It's very demure. And there we have the uh, fried shrimp, fried pork, fried dumplings. So everything here is basically fried. Oh, the jalapeno. It looks like jalapeno fried chicken. Dim sum lately has been getting so much more expensive. So it used to be about two to three dollars for a little plate. Now I think it's about four to five, maybe even six. So we'll have to be very careful about what we order here. We actually got the menu here listing all the prices. So we can actually try not to hit $100. So for small plates, it's actually $5.50. Here, $5.50. A few years ago, this used to be $3. For the medium, $5.95, and for the large, $7.75. Special items at $10.50. Special plates used to be $7, but now it's $10.50. So, thank you, inflation. This is gonna hurt. Now, these are my favorite buns here. They have like a custard inside. I like it better than pork buns. This thing called gai mei bao. I guess if you have to translate it, it's like chicken butt bread. I guess it looks like a chicken butt, but if you open it up, there is some um, custard, coconut filling inside. It's sweet, it has a coconut taste. It's like a dessert bun. When Chinese people used to go eat dim sum back in the day, it's supposed to be like really cheap, one to two dollars per dish. We sit here, we hang out, we snack, and we spend like the morning, the afternoon just chilling and hanging out and uh, and drinking tea. That's why in Chinese, it's called yum cha. We're just here to you know, drink tea and just snack on some things. But these days, it's no longer just kind of like hanging out and eating uh, because if you eat too much, you literally rack up like $100 worth of food. That's not what dim sum is supposed to be about. Be aware, if you're American, these old ladies are gonna try to upsell you on these like fancy dishes. And some of these fancy dishes aren't even like authentic Chinese food. They're like made for Americans. So yeah, just watch out. So the cool thing is, if the cart's not coming to you, you can actually go to the cart and have the lady uh, grab a dish for you. Thank you. So right here we have the kind of like a turnip radish pudding cake. So this is very delicate, but with the right chopstick skills, you can do whatever you want. Slightly crispy on the outside to give that extra little kind of different texture, but otherwise, radish on the inside or turnip, some Chinese sausage. So you can see it, it's like oozing out. This is the rice noodle with beef, super delicious. You can actually get it with other things too. Uh, other fillings such as shrimp. All right, we have the meatball here. This is quite smaller than I remember actually. They used to be huge. They used to be about this big and there'll be three. But I guess now we get four. So I guess it's the same amount of meat, 
but they used to be huge. Uh, it's not like an Italian meatball. It doesn't fall apart. It actually has some sort of a spongy texture to them. And it's filled with peas and carrots. And what you would do is you actually dip it in soy sauce and eat it or just eat it by itself. Now here we have these tofu skin rolls. In Chinese it's called sinjoku. It's filled with mushrooms, bamboo shoots. And it's all wrapped up. Sauce is actually pretty delicious. I don't know what the sauce flavor is, but it just it goes very well with this roll. All right, the shumai here. This is actually pretty large for shumai, but hey, the more the better. It's actually made of pork, filled with shrimp, has some mushroom in it. So unlike the other ones that are made of beef, this one also has like a kind of like a wonton wrapper around it. So your typical shumai uh, pork dumpling here. Yeah, we have the chicken feet here. It's actually my favorite dim sum dish. As you can tell, there's the sauce that's sort of gelatin-like, but you know when the chicken feet is good, when it's very bouncy. The skin, it's all bouncy and springy, and it's all puffed up because it's actually deep fried in super hot temperature to get this kind of boiling skin texture where, it, where the meat and the skin can just come right off easily. Now, a lot of people don't eat this because they're thinking, why am I eating chicken feet? But it's actually one of the most delicious dim sum dishes uh, that you can find here. Yeah, we have the tripe and the uh, kind of like the braised beef intestines. We have here jong wrapped in banana leaf before they peel it all off. And it contains rice, all sorts of ingredients inside, including I think Chinese sausage again, or some sort of fatty pork. Like we're also gonna get some egg porridge. One of my favorites is the preserved duck eggs into the porridge. And then of course, topped with green onions. Right here, we're gonna get another dessert. Only one? One. Yeah, so we have here the sesame balls filled with red bean. We have here the egg noodles filled with beef, which you can also get with barbecue pork or shrimp. This is the shumai. Everyone knows shumai. It's the most commonly known dim sum dumpling. This is the tofu skin rolls filled with mushroom. I believe it's actually vegetarian. There's no meat inside of here. Approaching here, we have the sticky rice. This is what you would eat on a cold night because it's warm, it's sticky, it has all the toppings already kind of mixed in with some Chinese bacon, Chinese sausage. Right here, we have some dessert, which is the buns. Uh, it's very long, it's filled with custard and coconut, topped with sesame seed, something sweet, along with other dessert here, which is the egg tart. We have here jong or jongji, depending on how you say it. Filled with some meat, glutinous rice wrapped in a banana leaf. It's supposed to be like a all-encompassing meal in one. You have your carbs and you have your meat. Over here, we have the kind of fancy shrimp roll. It's deep fried. There's a piece of shrimp in there. Very fancy. I don't think people usually eat this on a normal basis, but we got it here. Another common dim sum dish, the chicken feet or feng jiao, uh, where it's just very flavorful, somewhat spicy, uh, where you would just eat the skin off. There's a little bit of meat on there. You can get that, but it's mostly skin. Very delicious. And last but not least here, we have the meatball. Your pretty standard meatball uh, made of beef. You just dip in soy sauce and you eat it. Part of your normal dim sum meal. We have pretty much all the basic ones for dim sum that any dim sum meal would require. Uh, just all the little dumpling pieces. None of the fancy stuff. Mostly mo mostly the small and medium dishes here. Uh, this is the staple that I usually eat. Uh, when me and my parents come, this is what we usually get. It's usually the cheaper ones and the most common dim sum dishes. So we're gonna try a bunch of dim sum here and let you know what is what. And if you ever come here to get dim sum, now you know what to order. But first, some tea. Well, everything we order here is like the staple, most common uh, dim sum dishes. None of the fancy, you know, kind of wacky things. But this meatball here is something that it's served at every dim sum restaurant. It's basically a meatball. It's a 
little pink here, but it's thoroughly cooked. It has sort of a spongy texture, so it's not really, you know, it's not like an Italian meatball. Almost like a fish ball, if you've ever eaten like an Asian fish ball before. Soy sauce on here, on the plate. We're going to continue with more balls, and we're going to get a shumai. I guess it's a really lopsided ball, but as you can see, this is a shumai. It's a pork dumpling, has a wrapper on it, filled with shrimp and mushrooms. This is what you commonly see, you know, on social media. People getting shumai, a lot of restaurants doing their Asian fusion dishes that have shumai on it. But we're also gonna dip it in some soy sauce here. This is really good, this is, I love this. Between the meatball and the shumai, these are like the two things that I always order. The two things my parents would always order. Just because it's meat, it's delicious, it's satisfying. And it fills you up. All right, now we're gonna try the duck egg porridge. From what I hear, anecdotally, a lot of Americans are like really freaked out with uh, preserved duck eggs. You can eat like five of them because they're really delicious. But here it is combined with some pork, scallions, some duck egg right here, and it's a hearty, hearty meal. Mm. Mm. This is something you would eat, especially if you're sick, because it's very, it has a lot of liquid. It kind of just purges your system and all the flavors just come together. So yeah, if you get a chance to eat duck egg porridge, definitely do it. Mm. One of my other favorites. I guess these are all my favorites. I wouldn't order anything that's not my favorite here. This, if you take a look a little closer, it just looks like a blob of tofu skin. But it's actually filled with mushrooms, a lot of bamboo shoots, and other things that I don't even know what they're called. But cheers, let's take a bite. And this is what's on the inside. I take that back. I actually think there's a there's some meat in here. There's a lot of ingredients in here. Gives that little crunch. Like I said, there's some bamboo shoots, some mushroom, and a lot of little other things that I have no idea what it is. But as a kid, I always loved dipping it in the sauce. It's super glistening. And take a bite. So we're gonna go with the jong. Actually, I don't know what's the English name for this, but it's the uh, kind of like glutinous rice and it has meat and other ingredients in there such as sausage, other types of rice it looks like. Chinese people will know what I'm talking about. So if you come here, you gotta make sure you order this because you actually cannot get it anywhere else. I don't think you can buy it in stores. Uh, you can't get it in regular Chinese restaurants either. So the zhong, spelled Z-O-N-G. Is this spelled C-O-N-G? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Z-O-N-G-Y-E or Z-I. Yeah, go Google it. You'll know. you find it. That was really good. But I can't eat too much because, you know, I have a lot more to eat. So up next is the rice noodle. It's a little flimsy, but if you're good with the chopstick, you can definitely get it here. What I did notice is that it's not wrapped around all the way through. Usually it's wrapped around all the way through. It comes with this sweet soy sauce that's also on this plate. And uh, yeah, it just makes it so much better. I love the sweet soy sauce over the regular soy sauce. Yeah, so it's just a piece of rice noodle filled with beef or shrimp or pork, whatever you want in there. If you have multiple versions, you just eat it. Cheers. We're gonna go a little carby, as in carbohydrates. Uh, this is the sticky rice here. Let me take a look at that. That's pretty, it's like a dome of rice. Break this apart and take a bite out of there. It's so sticky. As you can tell, there's little pieces of Chinese sausage. There's some Chinese bacon in here. Winter night, we would eat this because Everything is all there within the rice dish. Nothing in there, but yeah, cheers.
$100 worth of food we need to eat. So let's get started because I think they're gonna close soon. Up next is the, the chicken feet, the dreaded chicken feet. I think a lot of people are afraid of the chicken feet just because they don't know how to eat it. As you can see, it's just literally a piece of chicken feet. To those that don't know how to eat this, you literally just take a bite at what we, I don't know what it's called. Are these fingers on these chicken feet or toes? They're probably toes. You take a bite and then you spit out the bones after you kind of maneuver the bone around your in your mouth. Oh, see? Bone. Yeah, it's hard to describe how to eat it. You just take a bite, get one of the toes, maneuver it around your mouth, kind of strip the skin, strip the meat, and then spit out the bone. You ever play that game Mortal Kombat where the guy just sucks up the person during a fatality and then spits out all the bones? Kind of like that. Some people be like, hey, I can tie a cherry stem with my tongue. And I'd be like, guess what? I can stuff this chicken feet in my mouth and spit out all the bones. But yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna take some skill and some experience and some practice to eat something like this. Uh, let's go ahead and try this turnip cake here. Now they, these comes in blocks. Yeah, as I said before, slightly burnt, giving you an extra texture to it. So you're not just eating something that's just mushy. There's, um, there's a little crisp to it. Mm. Yeah. But once you bite into it, it's very soft. Kind of like pudding. They call this, actually, I don't even know what they call it. They said it and I don't remember the name. But technically, it's just basically a really, really crispy fried shrimp. If you can see right there, it's so airy. There's so many holes. It's so deep fried. Since I'm holding it with my hands, I'm gonna actually just eat it like this. So. There's a piece of extremely flavorful. I can't even say it. There's a shrimp in here that's extremely full of flavor. This crispy outside is falling apart. Literally, it's like falling everywhere on the table. Um, kind of reminds me of tempura, except even more fragile. So what it looks like, it looks like a bunch of shrimp rolled together and then deep fried all around. Actually, I can see why this is worth uh, $10.50. It's really good. It takes some skill to make it. All right, up next, we have braised tripe cow intestines, similar to what I would say menudo, you know, uh, except just different flavor and not as soupy, more saucy. Mm. We have this thing, what we called, in Chinese, it's called gai mei bao, which kind of translates to chicken butt bun. So yeah, it's filled with custard and coconut. I actually like this a lot. It's one of my favorite sweeter buns. Mm. If you really like coconut, then this is definitely one thing that you should get. My hand is much more simpler and I can show you that this is covered with sesame seeds. So let's take a bite and we'll see. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Super crispy on the outside. Red bean paste on the inside. The outer layer here is like very soft kind of like mochi kind of texture. Chewy, sticky, highly recommend. Now we're approaching the $100 mark. As soon as we try these two desserts, I actually have no idea what it is. It looks like some sort of gelatin with some fruit. You know, I think these are mangoes these, and this is great. Seems like it's refreshing and we really needed to hit that $100 mark. So yeah. It's like a stronger version of Jello, if that makes sense. It's not as jiggly. Uh, there's actually some kind of cohesiveness to it. You have to really kind of bite into. But other than that, it's almost flavorless. So, hmm. It's like it cleanses your palate and, you know, it kind of prepares you for the end of the meal. I always save 
the egg tart for last, just because to me, that is the real dessert. So we're gonna take a look here at this little thing, you know, the very demure egg tart. We're actually gonna test out how well it's made. So it should be very flaky, should not be um, hard or extremely, extremely springy. So it should just kind of, oh, no, thank you. These are still trying to sell me stuff and they know I have all this food here. Okay, anyway, so <laughs> let's take a bite. That's the good stuff. It actually has less filling than I would like. Usually I like it equal, equal, or like, you know, 50, 50. That looks like it's about 75%, 25% ratio to the filling. Other than that, it's still very flaky, very delicious. Oh, see, I broke apart. It's $100 worth of food, so technically you would never come alone to dim sum to eat $100 worth of it. You would come with maybe a few people, I would say four or five, split it. $20 per person is pretty good. Today, we spent $100 on dim sum with small plates coming in at $5.50. I remember when small dishes were $1.29 over 10 years ago. Dim sum isn't as affordable as it used to be, but we're here for tradition and of course, chicken feet. Delicious chicken feet. Great Wall might be the only dim sum spot in Phoenix, but the flavors still make it worth it. And hey, it's cheaper than therapy. If you made it all the way through this video, hit that subscribe button to help the channel. Say hi if you do see me around and follow me on social media at AZFoodGuy.